Would you breathe with me, please? Taking a deep breath. And again. And one more time. Something so sacred about that. <coughs> breathing together. Breathing is sacred anyway, but breathing together, wow, amazing. So as I mentioned already, today is New Member Sunday, and we have, are you ready for this, 40 oh, wow. new members. <laughs> Community, our Sangha. If you are not familiar with that word, Sangha is a Sanskrit word. That it's a, this is a loose, everything in Sanskrit is a loose translation. But it means a community of people who have attained at least the first stage of awakening. An association, assembly, company, or community with common goals, vision, or purpose. That's what we are. And that's what people who are joining today are acknowledging. And nothing does my heart more good than to know that there are a group of people who are choosing to publicly declare. This, I, I believe in this teaching. I like this place. I like how I feel when I'm here. Just like the song today. I like how I feel. That sense of freedom, that sense of belonging that happens like this. I love that people say, this is my Sangha. This is my spiritual community. This is my spiritual home. You're going to have a chance to meet them in just a little bit. But first got to do some preaching. Because, you know, that's what I do. Come on, that was funny. <laughs> So I have several stories that I use when we have new members Sunday. Uh, I tell the story sometimes about stone soup. You all know the stone soup story. It's such a nice story. The stranger comes into town and he's hungry and nobody will share food with him. And so he gets out some stones and he gets some water and he starts cooking the stones. And he's like, oh, it smells so good. It's so wonderful. And pretty soon people are bringing things from their homes. And together they make this beautiful stone soup that everybody within the community can share. I just told you the story. I wasn't expecting to. I said, oh, okay, good. So I often use that when we're talking about new members. The other one that I use is about the, the lessons from geese. I particularly like this one. It's a, a, you know, there's so many lessons we can learn from geese, including the fact that they honk at one another to encourage them to keep flying. Yeah, I like that one. And then for last year's new member Sunday, I just come back from a trip to California to see the wildflowers. And, um, and so I use the wildflower metaphor uh, to kind of talk about a sense of community and how there is enough to go around. So today, though, I have a new story. I have a new way of explaining this that really, to me, illustrates this whole idea of community and supporting one another. And as always, it has to do with nature. I mean, if you know me, I find my inspiration in nature. If, if, we, if we, as a human race, started to really pay attention to how nature works and the ease and the flow and the, the orderliness with which nature worked, then our lives would also flow so much more easily with more ease and orderliness. Where we get into trouble sometimes is when we think we're smarter than nature. Yeah? And that's another story and that's another talk for another time. Because today's story that I want to share with you, it's not actually a story, it's actually, a, it, it's actually true. It, it, well, the internet told me it was true, so <laughs> obviously it must be. And it's about the giant redwoods of California. If you are not familiar with the giant redwoods, they are considered to be the largest trees in the world. And the tallest one, it used to be General Sherman, it's not General Sherman anymore, now it's a, a, a tree called Hyperion. It is over 300
179 feet tall. It has a diameter of 16 feet. So I'm five foot two. You'd have to put me around three times for the diameter of Hyperion. But what is so remarkable about these trees is there's not just one. There's an, there are entire forests of these massive giants, hundreds of them, growing so tall that it is impossible to see the top of the tree when you are standing on the ground. They are massive. So you would think that in order to support this behemoth, these behemoths, these enormous living things, you would think that the root system for these trees would be super, super deep and super strong. But the opposite is actually true. They grow these amazingly shallow root systems only about 10 feet down. So I want you to picture what I'm talking about. 10 feet down root system for a tree that is 379 feet high. Right? Well, what allows for this amazing stability is it, it's something that is called, I'm going to get it right, cooperative growth. It is also called the Grove Factor. And what that means, so here you've got these trees, and they're growing relatively close to one another, right? So their roots go down not very far, but they're spreading out in all of these di different directions. They can spread out 100 feet. They just don't spread down 100 feet. So what happens is as they're going along and they're kind of all close to one another, they get tangled up in the neighboring trees. And so they intertwine, they intertwine and they grow together and they protect one another from the onslaught of the things that California can throw at them, folks. It may not be Calgary, but I mean, there are, there are storms, there is wind, especially where they grow kind of near the coast. And guess what else California has? Earthquakes. You don't hear about the giant redwoods falling over because of earthquakes. In other words, because of this intertwining root system, they literally hold one another up. And as a result, some of those trees in the redwood forest have lived for over 2,000 years. Whereas singular trees do not live that long. So can you see how this analogy works for New Member Sunday? The idea that we as a spiritual community are holding one another up. We are helping each other to live stronger lives, to live better lives. And i got to tell you, when I first came into this teaching, that was a little bit of a surprise to me. Because regardless of my kind of outgoing personality, the truth of the matter is I'm a bit of a lone wolf. And I bet there are people out here, like a hundred or so of you, who are also lone wolves. Because we have this desire, there's something within us, there's a, that innate something within us that wants to understand how the, how the universe works, wants to understand how nature works, and we have this yearning to grow through life. It's hard to find people to connect with. Am I right? Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. So for people like this, We've come to believe that we have to do it all by ourselves. So we're kind of alone in the world, or we feel as if we're alone in the world. And yet most of us will tell the story of when we walked into our first spiritual center. You know what I'm talking about, right? And we just knew that we had found our tribe. We found our peace. We found our root system. And since then, we found how much easier and how much enjoyable life can be when we are sharing it with people of like mind. 
doesn't mean we all think the same, but it means that we are open. We are loving. We see the good in people. Ernest Holmes said this, every heart responds to the warmth of love. Every mind yearns for its embrace and no life is complete without it. Love really is the fulfillment of the law of good. Love alone can heal the world and enable people to live together in unity and peace. Yes? Take a breath. I have us breathe together, incidentally, every Sunday. I have us breathe together because there's something when we inspire, we are breathing in spirit. That's its root word, in spirit. Another beautiful quote by Aikido master Mitsugi Seotome. Ask me how many times I practice that. <laughs> if you were all alone in the universe with no one to talk to, no one with which to share the beauty of the stars, to laugh with, to touch, what would be the purpose of your life? What, what would be your purpose in life? It is love which gives your life meaning. This is harmony. We must discover the joy of each other, the joy of challenge, and the joy of growth. <coughs> so isn't it a beautiful feeling to know that rather than having to do this thing called spiritual growth all by ourselves, like a guru up at the top of the mountain, that we are actually enhanced, we are strengthened when we're together. Another aspect of the Redwoods root system not only are they there to support one another, but they actually, when those roots begin to entangle and come together, they're actually producing, uh, providing nutrients to one another to help sustain this massive growth. In other words, they are supporting and they are sharing together. That growth continues to be enhanced because they are providing nutrition and nutrients to one another. So think about that in terms of finding our sangha, of finding our tribe. When we are with people who are also working on themselves, who are also going through their personal and spiritual growth, we find ourselves mentally, emotionally, and intellectually stimulated. Yes? Yeah. Just ask anybody who's attended a class or a seminar or a workshop or who comes here on a regular basis on Sunday. There is something about the learning and the sharing and the exploring environment that gets the juices going. That nutrition. I find I myself, I've been at this a long time and I still have trouble going to sleep after a stimulating class or an event because my mind is just filled with possibilities. I'm awakened. I'm enlivened. Yeah? Yeah. That's spiritual nourishment. That's spiritual nourishment. You cannot help but grow when you are a part of a, a, a spiritual system or a support system that encourages growth. You cannot help but grow when you are part of a system that encourages and is designed for growth. That's why we come here every Sunday. Why we come to classes, discussion groups, walk out well Wednesday. So we can stay plugged in to that the root the root system. And at this center, very soon, we will also be providing physical nutrients as well. I know, because in case you did not know it, we are planning, okay, I'm going to get the name right, a community-supported agriculture project in the lot right over here. In other words, we're going to have an urban farm. So here's what's going to happen. The produce is 
are going to grow, and apparently they have in a humane way of dealing with the gophers. <laughs> and the <laughs> So here's what's going to happen, is that we're going to have an opportunity to buy into it by, by investing in shares of this. So not only are we going to provide nutrition for all any of us who invest in it, but what is left over is going to go out to the greater community as well. So like the Redwoods, this center's root system is providing support spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. Yeah. yeah. I <laughs>